if you could live your life judgment-free? Are you ready to live the unapologetic, confident life that God designed for you? If you are, then this is the place to be. Welcome to the Bold, Brave, and Sassy Show. It's time to break free of physical, spiritual, and heart-centered challenges that have held you back for way too long. Listen in for powerful tips and tools to help you break free today. Hear from leading experts along with me, Annie Berryhill, your host and personal guide to freedom. Now it's time to live like no one's judging. Let's go. Hey there, everybody. This is Annie Berryhill. I am the host of the Bold, Brave, and Sassy Show. Thank you so much for coming back to listen in. We have a really great show for you today. I'm super excited to share my friend, Dr. Judy Bauer, with you. She is the founder of the Father's Family Business, and she specializes in helping Christians grow and thrive and come alive. It sounds like a rap song, right, Judy? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She is a firecracker. She is one of my favorite people that I have met in recent days. I've probably known her for about a year, but we connected hard and fast on a heart level, and it is super, super fun to have you here. So welcome, Judy. How's it going? Thanks, Annie, for having me. I'm so excited to have a chance to just chat together and share some good, fun things. Oh, good. Girl talk. Girl talk. Oh, yeah. It's time. (laughs) It's time. (laughs) Well, tell me a little bit about what you do. First off, tell me about the Father's Family Business because it's really exciting what you're doing. Oh, thanks so much. Well, it started with just this dream in me that I wanted to just be able to branch out and help people on every kind of level in their walk in life because we all have so many things that we go through in various seasons. And because I've graduated to such an awesome age right now, (laughs) I have a great rear view mirror look at life. And it's just so fun to be able to help other people get a perspective on where they are and where they want to go and help them achieve that. So it's really cool. I love that too, Judy. And, and we were talking about this before we started. I'm 52 and Woo-hoo. you're, and you're how 70. old? 70. 70. She does not no. sound or look or act <laughs> like what you would think a 70 year old woman would be like for sure. She is, man, uh, she's just pumped up. She's gorgeous. She's energetic. She's just full of just love. Oh my gosh, this is an incredible lady. And I love what you see blush. (laughs) And I love what you said too about the the rear view mirror, because I think that's really how we understand wisdom. You know, it's like knowledge plus experience equals wisdom, right? And as younger women, I know for myself, you know, I just want to hurry up and know it and be seasoned and, and like, you know, just hurry up, you know, in my thirties and in the midst of, you know, the hardcore, you know, raising kids and stuff. I'm like, oh, already, God, please let me know it all and be there. I don't know. It was just frustrating. But it is true that when we look back, we we have so many good lessons and so many good things that we understand that I think that we can really share with people. Now, you know that this show show is called Bold, Brave, and Sassy. Yes, and And I love that. I know. And you're so cute. Like You always write me or send me messages that talk about being sassy. And I love how you've really just uh, embraced that. And so what is a, what does a 70 year old woman think about being sassy? I mean, what is sassy at 70 look like? I think it looks like just being your true self. I remember thinking when I was in my forties, when I'm 50, I'm going to really speak my mind. (laughs) And then when I got to 50, I still wasn't quite yet able to do that. It seemed like, and now that I'm 70, I'm like, what in the world? I just need to get on with it. You know, <laughs> It's time. And so now I've just kind of, well, I went from a shy, bashful person in my 20s because of some things that happened in my childhood to just morphing into this person now that just feels fully alive and want to see other people also experience that, not waste time. Because we can move quicker through life if we let someone else kind of help us a little bit along the way. There was so many times I felt kind of stuck. Mm. And, uh, you know, if we can help one another get unstuck, then we can move forward a little quicker and be bold and sassier a lot longer in our life. Right, right. <laughs> waiting well, tell, till we're 70. <laughs> I'd love to hear a little bit more about looking back, how you would describe like the, you know, I look, at, I look back on my life and see things, and I'll finish that sentence in a second, and see things almost like a map or a road. 
you know, and I can see little mile markers and, you know, different things. So when you were talking about being stuck, what were some of the things that you felt like really kind of held you or made you feel stuck over the course, you know, up until now? I think there's different times and seasons in our lives. And sometimes I don't know that as we're living through life, we really recognize that there's times and seasons right. and that there's an ebb and flow to life. And so sometimes we get in a place where we think, is this how it's always going to be? And we forget that this too shall pass mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, you know, we won't even remember 10 years later that moment that now seems so horrific and difficult and stuck. Right. So just to kind of move forward out of those things purposefully knowing, take one step at a time and keep going rather than allowing yourself to just stay and wallow in that mud pond kind of a thing. So would you say that, you know, if you could qualify or categorize things that you felt like made you stuck, were there, were they things that were caused by other people? Were there things that were caused by your own beliefs or your own thoughts or your, your own perceptions or your own, you know, things that you ex- expectations, you know, what, maybe they were all of them, but maybe if you took your top three, what do you think was the most common thread about what was making you and keeping you stuck? I think uh, it can be two things predominantly. One can be your own baggage that you bring from different traumas that you might've had in your growing up years that kind of give you uh, messages that you uh, take in as inner vows, if you will, or as inner convictions that you now base your life on that aren't maybe genuinely true, but they're your experience. So that's how it seems true to you, right? And then those things can kind of keep coming back into life uh, and kind of overshadowing your ability to be bold and sassy in the moment and be fully alive, right? Because you're listening to those me- messages of the past that kind of keep you down feeling Mm -hmm. less than Mm -hmm. and so coming through those kind of things uh we have to self-talk or reparent ourselves i call it to you know parent yourself now knowing what you know now and help yourself move through those things because um sometimes when those traumas happen to us in our childhood we don't have the wherewithal obviously or the wisdom because we haven't lived long enough to have it Uh, to be able to see things a little bit differently. You're looking at a child's perspective. So when you're an adult, now look at things with adult eyes and reparent yourself in that situation. The second thing I think would be things that happen to you as a result of other people or maybe bad decisions that you made that really knock you off your feet a little bit. (laughs) Those things happen to all of us. It's a part of growing up and getting the the gray hair and the wisdom that you're going to (laughs) need comes from struggling through those kind of times. So making those things not be a negative to you, but realize a lot of good wisdom and character development is going to come out of those things. So now I look at things in life so much differently than I did in my twenties, thirties and forties and fifties. Just recognizing I can talk myself through this thing now And I can also realize that other people will come and go. They don't define who I am and put things in that perspective. So I would think those are the two things that in my rear view mirror that would really stand out to me that have helped me now be bolder and sassier. (laughs) I love it. I love how you keep talking about that. Way to plug it. Way to plug it, Judy. I love it. I I think it's, it's so beautiful the way that you articulated that. And obviously you do have, again, the benefit of the rear view mirror. And I know, I mean, I see the patterns of the same things that I get stuck thinking or believing about myself and they sort of predicate how I make my decisions. Well, I can't do that because I've never done that or because based on my past experience or failures, blah, 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 this is the way it's always going to be. But it's so true what you said that just because it is this way now doesn't mean it's going to be this way forever. I, I remember, I think about that a lot too, because I remember when my husband was playing baseball, we were playing for, he, we, <laughs> I always say we, yeah. he was playing for the Atlanta Braves and they had, um, gone through the playoffs and they had come down to the wire and now they were going to go to the world series. And this was our first and as it turned out only time that we were going to the world series. And I remember thinking the night after we won, we had all gone out to get food and to celebrate together the whole team. And it was just like, Oh, so fun. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is it. This is the way life is going to be forever. (laughs) Like now we're on the high road. This is it. You know, this is how we're going to live. And 
it wasn't. I mean, That's we right. went to the playoffs yeah. next year. We didn't get to the, you know, we didn't get to the World Series. And then the year after that, we weren't even on that team anymore. So we didn't get, you know, another chance to do that with them. But I, I think it can go either way. Sometimes when we're in a negative situation, we think I'm never going to get out of this. It's going to, yeah. this is my life. Like, and you sort of just resolve yourself and kind of give into it. And then there's other times when it's really good and you kind of set yourself up for like the big fall of disappointment because yeah, you know, that's, I've done that. that's what they say, you know, like the only thing you can count on is change. Mm-hmm. You know, change is happening. That's the, other, true. the other thing that you you know, talked about was this difference between, you know, the traumas and how it sets you up to have this like child, childhood mind. Like we almost get stuck there. We, you know, I've read and talked about different things about how when we're young before the age of eight, our identity is shaped by the people around us, our parents and the people of influence around us. And so we really are the conglomeration, the conglomeration, conglomeration. That's right. Of, yeah, that's a good of, word. Yeah. Of their perceptions and their ideals and their values. And it's not until we can develop our own critical thinking and conscious thinking that we can start to change that. But, you know, trauma is horrible and it makes you believe things about yourself that aren't true. Right. Mm-hmm. So what would you say to the woman who is, let's say, in her 30s or 40s and is just now starting, she knows there was traumatic things in her life and she knows that they were there and they still hurt a little, little bit. They're like a little bit of a splinter in her soul. And yet she's now having this awareness that she doesn't want to be like the victim of the trauma mindset anymore. What, what would be some actual practical tips to tell her to be able to not be living that through that, like that is the basis for her thinking and her decision making. How would how would you do that? Well, there's a few things right away that just come to me. For one, I think that when you're in your 30s and moving towards your 40s, usually if you've had children by that time specifically, a lot of times it's at the ages that they are where your traumas or dramas happen that you get triggered. And uh, like let's say if something happened to you at five, when your kids are around five something starts getting unleashed within you and those kind of things begin to come back and rear their ugly head and their big voice. And so those things kind of are uh, opportunities for us to kind of then look at it afresh when we're getting triggered by things and just look at it as an adult now from our new perspective and look back at those things and see who we were then and who was around us then and just think about that. First off, secondly, what I would say is to talk to God about it because, you know, when you just bare your soul before him, then at least it releases all that toxic thinking and feelings and all the stuff that's coming up. So that would be the second thing. The third thing then would be after you talk with God and kind of get it off your chest, then I would say journal away, you know, Mm -hmm. just write and write and write. And don't worry about if it sounds good or if the grammar's right or the punctuation or anything just write and just let it all come out because you're releasing all of that stuff. And then when you look at it a couple weeks later, then I find I can really see more clearly what's going on and I can talk to myself about it. The next thing I would do is get a trusted friend. And if you don't have one that you feel you could share those kind of things with then go to a counselor or someone like that who you can also talk it through with because it's in that back and forth talking that revelation comes out and you get those aha moments and you get that freedom. You get set free. We need one another and uh, we are not an island unto ourselves. I've really discovered that throughout life and we need trusted friends or even if we pay for it, it's a worth worthy investment because we're worth it to be totally free. Yeah. I, I, those are such great tips and, man, I can tell you a million times I wish I would have just had that like on my refrigerator, <laughs> just that <laughs> list. Like when you're feeling yeah. this way, yeah, um, do this. you know, and I recently learned the definition of trauma and I think people sometimes quantify or discount their own trauma because it's not as bad as someone else's mm-hmm. trauma. And, and that's like a whole nother layer of just toxic, bad yeah. thinking, you know, that, that isn't productive. It, yeah. it, you know, trauma is any time in your life where you didn't feel safe. You know, exactly. it could be a car accident. It could be, um, you know, a violent parent that never hit you, but talked in a way that yeah. made you feel unsafe. It, it could be, you know, t- anything that made you feel unsafe and it may not have 
culminated in any sort of physical act, but it's sometime when you felt unsafe and it can cause trauma. And so it all counts and it's all relative yes. really to our own lives. And one thing that I noticed in my life is because of some of the traumatic things that I went through, I really was the kind of kid wired from birth that was like, you're not going to make me cry. You no matter what you do, yeah. you're not going to make me cry. I'm going to fight yeah. you to the death. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. like, I'll stand up to you. I don't yeah. care. I'll take the punishment. I don't care. Yep. And I mean, that's good in a way. I mean, cause you're either going to, what is the, the F's, you know, you're going to fight. Or fight. Well, there's actually four. There's like, you're going to, yeah. you're going to fight. You're going to flee. You're going to fall mm. or you're going to freeze. Mm, yeah, that's right. Right. So there's that's four. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was a fighter, like flat out mm -hmm. fighter. But that kind of created in me this over dependence on independence. Yeah. Right. So I was way too independent thinking that I was the only one who went through this or I was the only one who felt this way. And as I got older and older, I just became more determined to be stronger. And the right. downfall of that is we become what I call unteachable, you know, where we're not able to let people help us in things because we're going to doggone power through ourselves. Right. Nose to the grindstone. Set ourselves up for extra little head bangs, you know. <laughs> hundred percent. hundred percent. I always would say I was, I'm still a very determined person. And if I couldn't go around the wall or dig under the wall or climb the wall, I would just run into the wall. And that's how I would learn. You know, I just yeah. say something stupid, do something stupid because at least I was going, I was trying, you know, yes. uh, and to learn a template than that just a little bit. But I think it's really powerful too for the super independent types to understand that, that there are people that that do want to listen to you. And yes. the, the side benefit with something you alluded to too is, is when you either reread -re your journal or you're speaking to someone and you're hearing your own words come out of your mouth. Sometimes it's like an out of body experience because you're like, yes. who is saying that? That's not what I believe about myself at all. Those two things do not match up. Yes. You know, where you're like, well, and then I'm this way and blah, blah, you know, saying all these like sad things, but inside you're like, but I'm kind of like, really tough and I'm capable and I'm smart and I'm experienced. So you have, it's really good to hear yourself say it really good to hear yourself say it. Something about when you articulate it, yes. you, you get these epiphanies that are really yes. awesome. Yeah. Those aha moments are priceless and they only come when we're kind of mining the gold that's in us. You know, you got to dig and drill and dig and drill some more. But then when you hit that mother load, whoo, it's awesome. And it sets you free. Totally. Yeah. It, it is really freeing. And I think the one thing that is consistent about this life is, you know, somebody somewhere is going to hurt you or let you down oh, or disappoint totally. you. And yeah, that's a given. <laughs> it's a given. It's, it's a fallen yeah. Yeah. jacked up world, you know, yeah. you know, and I really, I really believe that, you know, what you were talking about, like the journaling and talking to people is the beginning of awareness. And one of the things that I, I talk about a lot and I, I, it floats around my head a lot is this idea that like once you are aware of something, there's no turning back. You, you can't be unaware of something you've been made aware of. So from That's the, so good. yeah. And from the moment that you have, you understand like, Hey, I'm doing this behavior, but I'm actually modeling the behavior I didn't like from the parent who did it to me. Right. Like that's really from my own experience. And then you go, oh my gosh, this isn't really me. This is just me being a little robot and doing what I got instead of doing what I want. Yeah, I call that going back to default mode. You know, we have that sense of, we go back to that. So to establish a new plumb line, it takes some work and practice to establish that as a new habit pattern of thinking and doing. Yeah, It absolutely is. I, I think too, I have such a training mindset because I worked in fitness for so long. And, you know, I, I remember one time I had this client, it was so funny. It's still funny to this day to me because it's just so, it's so just normal. But I remember she said, okay, I'm going to have you train me on Monday and Thursday. And we were just starting and we were doing some basic, you know, not heavy barbell stuff, just body weight stuff, maybe some hand weights, but we did a workout. And she texted me on Tuesday night and she said, I can't do Thursday. And I was like, why can't you do Thursday? She's like, I'm too sore. And I go, what? No, you have to do Thursday. That's exactly why I have to do Thursday. And I think people forget like our, in retraining our minds and our thoughts and our beliefs and all these things, 
it, we have to dig a new groove. It's painful. <laughs> it, it, it can be painful and it's uncomfortable, yes. right? It's uncomfortable yeah. and it's, it's sometimes boring and it's like, oh, why do I have yeah. to focus on this? But you, you have to remember the payoff yeah. is I'm going right. to have this new thinking. Like I'm going to what? Renew my mind. I'm going yes. to make it new, <laughs> renew. Yes. And I think it's, uh, I think the, the practicality of it is the stuff we don't want to do. We, you know, our instantaneous society says like, well, I thought it and I know it's wrong. So I'm going to do this new thing. Great start. But guess what? You have to override this yeah. longstanding pattern and habit that wants to, like you said, be default. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's important. It's really I, important. I think too, just to have a fresh reminder often that, God created all of us of humanity to have his DNA in us to be overcomers and to come up over all obstacles that try to put us down. And sometimes I think we forget about that and we can tap into that resolve to, you know, whatever it takes, I'm going to come up over this thing and I'm going to win this right. and have victory in that because we also then in that become what we want to model before our children and our grandchildren, nieces and nephews and so on, so that they see someone in their inner circle of family that has that mindset to come up over obstacles and that whenever something knocks you down, it's not the end of the world. Just get up, brush yourself off and tweak if you have to, or make adjustments, but get up and keep going because that's how you're going to win at life is you right. keep going. But sometimes now at this level of life and so many of my different friends are dying off and things like that. And you see that a lot of that is because they gave up on living life. You know, they just stopped doing that. And I think that's a key point for all of us is just to keep moving forward and enjoy each day for what it is. And it's yeah, it's really true. And again, you even mentioned it in a different context: the the value of repetition. Mm, yes, you know, and that's you know, the mother we were, of all learning, <laughs> right? Is the mother of all learning, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about learning a sport or learning a, right. a skill or a thought process or um, patterns or eating patterns or math. <laughs> right? It's true. And and another, another thing you said that really stuck out to me and made me think about you know, sort of this, this idea of motivation is there's nothing more motivating that when you have someone you care greatly about and you know, you're in a position of influence and, you know, parent to child yeah. being like one of the strongest, you know? Yeah. And I think for me, the bad behavior that I was getting away with, the way that I was treating people was a direct reflection of what I, again, had learned. And I'm not, not taking responsibility. I take full responsibility because I still had to open my mouth and make words come out. Yeah. You know, I had to still make my hands move and you know, do the things that I did. It is very convicting when, when someone is looking up at you, literally like in the physical, looking up to you yes. with these big eyes and going, mommy, mommy. Yeah. And you're like, oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I maybe shouldn't have done that. And, <laughs> and, and that, that corrective yeah. thing that you know, snaps, snaps you into attention. Yes. And you're like, man, I really got to change. And I mean, I'll tell you, I didn't have any tools like what we're talking about today. And it took me a really, really long time. And I had to ask for forgiveness a lot yeah. from my children for, you know, just the way. And my husband, I think that's such a valid point, Annie, that you said right there is we don't, or I didn't either have women that had gone on before me that could say things like what we're talking about now that can kind of give us a heads up and a different way of looking at things. We are in my era, our parents and grandparents didn't talk to us in these kinds of ways so that we had, could learn from them. You know, it was just basically, you know, when you're 18, you're out the door. Okay. Have a good life. kind of thing. <laughs> and it's like, well, but wait a minute, you know, we didn't have someone to talk us through, you know, and I think yeah. today we have a different look on parenting, but still sometimes we don't uh, share those things that we've learned with those around us and really talk and have conversations with our kids. Even when they're adult children, we can still have amazing conversations. I think that really is so awesome. And like a setting like what we're in now is girl talk and being able to just say it like it is and that we all need one another and we all need to talk <laughs> through all of these things. What is it, 20, 25,000 words a day for us ladies? Something like that. we got to get it out, man. <laughs> that's, why, that's why this is like the easiest show in the world. I just bring yeah. a bunch of ladies on and we just 
open and cluck away. <laughs> cluck, 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 cluck. Oh, <laughs> we just do that. our thing and the dudes are happy that we're just off in our little Getting world out, yeah. to each other and <laughs> hashing it out and we're all fixed and better by the time there we talk go. to them. And they're exactly. like, oh, sweet. Yeah. You're yeah. <laughs> Keep doing that. Yeah. Keep doing that. You're so much happier. It's awesome. Yes. So, yeah. well, Judy, this is so great. You are just an just like a bottomless well of information and joy and happiness. And man, I'm sure that we will have to do this again really soon. And we will pick oh, yeah. another topic to tackle that will hopefully, as I know that I'm inspired by what you're, you know, reinforcing and teaching and expanding in my thinking and understanding about, you know, how we actually do live as the girls that God made us to be, you know, yeah. I mean, that's really my heart. And that's really my passion, not just for myself, but for other people. And it's really cool to be in some ways like in the middle where yes. you're further along the path than I am, but I'm a little bit further along the path potentially yes. than some of the people that are listening. And then like together, we all can have this really collective cool. wisdom, collective girly wisdom. I love that's it. Right. I love it. So I have, I've so enjoyed having you and I hope that you would consider coming back another oh, time. Yeah. And, you know, for any of you who want to get in touch with Judy, she is just a dear heart and she is just got a heart as big as the world. And we will be putting her contact information into the show notes and there'll be a picture so you can actually see her, her beautiful face and, um, you know, some other things that she's got going on that you might be interested in tapping into. And as always, we'd love for you to leave a review about the show, to subscribe, to share it with your friends. If you've derived a value from this, you've enjoyed the time with us because we're going to keep doing this and we're going to keep encouraging you. We're going to keep kicking your butt a little bit, getting you to walk into the bold, brave and sassy lady that you already are. We want you to yes. just have, you know, like, like Judy says, to grow and thrive and come alive. Like mm -hmm. I wish I could steal that tagline. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> So Judy, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. I've loved every single second of it. And I just hope that you're just continue to do well and be well and loving on people like crazy like you do. Oh, thanks, Annie. It's such a blessing. I'm just so excited to be connected with you, how God arranges our connections in life and just with the people that are listening to us even now, making connections with them. It's just so awesome to be alive in this day and to have the abilities that we have to encourage one another to fully be who we are and just enjoy life every day. Every day. Woohoo. Well, on that yeah. note, guys, we are going to sign off again. This is the Bold, Brave, and Sassy show with Annie Berryhill. And I'd love for you to come back. And of course, if you need to get in touch with me, you just pop on over to my website at annieberryhill.com and you will be connected with a whole bunch of ways to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. For now, I'm going to sign off and I can't wait to talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.